Hello and welcome to your channel AWS Cloud Bytes. I'm your host Bhavesh Kumar. Today we are going to talk about VPC endpoints for S3. And before we jump into the demo where we're going to look into VPC endpoints specifically with S3, we are going to look into some slides about VPC endpoints, what are they and how we can set it up. So let's jump into the slides. What is a VPC endpoint? VPC endpoint is a secure and a private connection between a VPC, which means the virtual private cloud, and the AWS services. Services can be S3, DynamoDB, and a lot of services that are supported by VPC endpoints. These are two primarily that are supported using the gateway endpoints, and we'll talk about those. The connectivity between your VPC cloud, which is sitting within the AWS infrastructure and uh, AWS services without going through a VPC endpoint goes through a public internet, which is even though it is going on an HTTPS connection, it is still not secure. If you have your data and your connectivity and whatever interactions you're performing with these services from your VPC cloud stays within AWS infrastructure, that brings more secure and reliable connectivity. Why would you use VPC endpoint? There are three points over here, security, performance, and cost. If you're traversing on public internet, your data is less secure than it goes within the AWS backbone network. Performance VPC uh, endpoint will give you much better performance because it reduces the latency within the AWS internal or backbone network. If you go through a public network, in that case, the, the performance may not be stable and you may have big drops or spikes in your performance. So going through the AWS internal network will bring a lot of performance gains, which will not be available when you go through a public network. The third benefit over here is about cost. If you are sending some traffic from your private subnet to connect to S3, DynamoDB, or any other AWS service. In that case, your data from your private subnet will go through NAT gateways, and uh, all the data going outside from NAT gateway will be charged, depending upon the amount of data sent, as well as uh, the VPN costs that will be involved. That cost can be avoided if you go through uh, a private connection, now let's talk about type of endpoints that we have. There are two type of endpoints that will be available. One is interface endpoint and the other one is the gateway endpoint. Now interface endpoints are primarily where you connect with an AWS service using an ENI with a private IP, which means whenever you create a VPC endpoint of type interface endpoint, there is an ENI that is allocated within the subnet. The connectivity to AWS service is done using a private IP within your VPC. Each endpoint that you create, it creates a network interface, which is basically an ENI that is created with a private IP address. A gateway endpoint, on the other hand, is specifically for two services, Amazon S3 and DynamoDB. It uses route tables to direct the traffic from the VPC to the services. You can see there are two ways to connect to the S3 service. The initial endpoint that was available to connect privately to S3 uh, was using the gateway endpoints, but I have seen interface endpoints also available for S3 service now. I am not sure about the DynamoDB, but it may be coming up very soon. Let's look into the details of how VPC endpoints work. So the interface endpoints, they connect to AWS service using private IP that is uh, assigned in your VPC. And uh, you can have security added on top of these using your security groups. Interface endpoints are highly available within an AZ. Once you have the connectivity, there is high availability within that particular AZ. Gateway endpoints, on the other hand, they use route tables. They are available only for two services, S3 and DynamoDB. There is no additional endpoint fees. 
and they operate at a VPC level. They're not tied to a subnet while the interface endpoints are primarily tied to a subnet. So if you have to have interface endpoints from two different subnets, you will have to have two different interface endpoints. Some key points to remember here are one ENI per subnet, any ENI is attached to a single subnet. So if you have a one AZ deployment, then you can just use it. But if you have multi AZ deployment, you cannot share an ENI across multiple AZs or multiple subnets. For multi-AZ deployments, you'll have to have multiple interface endpoints deployed in each subnet. Traffic flow, as we already discussed, that the benefit of having a VPC endpoint is that the data or the flow of data over the network stays within the AWS backbone network, improving cost, speed, and security. Those are the three important benefits. Okay, let's look into the console now. I have logged into AWS console and let me walk you through some of the setup that has been done. Let's look into the EC2 service. Let me open that into a new window. So we are having running instances two over here and let's look at them. The first one is a public instance you can see it has a public IP and then the second one is a private instance it just have a private IP address there's no public IP also if you want to take a look at the VPC let's look at the VPC so you have one VPC here and you have a main route table let me open this route table. You can see that there is 10.16, 10.0.0.slash 16 CIDR and the subnet. There is a single subnet over here. Let's see if I have a NAT gateway. There is no NAT gateway. And there is one single internet gateway that is attached to this VPC. You can see this VPC has two subnet and two route tables. This subnet in 1A has a network gateway. So internet gateway over here. And this one, subnet V, doesn't have any internet gateway. So this route table, you can look at this route table. And this is again the local route. Now going back to EC2, I think it is, you can just open it over here. This EC2 is, this EC2 is associated with this particular subnet. And if you look at the subnet, this is the subnet where you have internet gateway because this one this ec2 is the public it has a public ip and this will actually the the public ip one will act as a bastion host or jump box for us so we will ssh onto this and then go to the private subnet the private subnet is in a different subnet altogether sorry the private ec2 is into the private subnet now your subnet, this is the, the private subnet. And the reason is that if you look at the routes, it is only local. So it is referencing its local route only. Let's look into the S3 bucket. So if I open this in a new window, you have this EC2 bucket. And there is uh, no other data, so it's all empty. Let's now begin by creating a VPC endpoint for S3. For that, I'm going to go to the terminal, try to get a cloud shell. I will use the public IP of the EC2, which is here. Let me copy this.
this is private, this is public IP address. And I open Cloud Shell in this now. So in the, I'm doing an SSH. Let me add the password. I'm logged in. If I do AWS S3 LS, it is giving me results because this is the public EC2 instance and it is connected to internet. And because there is an internet gateway attached, it is able to get me the results. Now, let me go to SSH cloud user at the private instance, which is this one. Let me copy the private IP 10.0.1.4.2. So if I do 10.0.1.4.2 and I'll say yes, let me get the password for that. I am on the private instance, private EC2 instance 10.0.1.42. You can see that. And if I do AWS S3 LS, I typed it wrong. So you can see that it will not give any results. The reason is there is no path from a private instance to any kind of uh, NAT gateway. Also, it is not connected with a public IP so that it can use the internet gateway i'm gonna go to the endpoints i'll go to the vpc feature of endpoints i'm just searching there just because it is easier otherwise i have to scroll through and i'll create let me make it smaller so i want to create an endpoint and I want to create this endpoint for an AWS service. You can see the type of endpoints that are showing up. You have endpoints for almost all the services. You can see Kandra. You have a lot more endpoints. I can go to other pages. So you have app config, some of the major, Athena, a lot more. So this is a s3 that we want to connect we'll just search for s3 and you can see that there is a global access endpoint and it's of type interface then you have gateway endpoints like you have east one so we are in us east one i can choose this one we are just using the gateway endpoint because these were the ones that came first today we have interface endpoints but let's just stick to the US East one. We are in North Virginia. So I'm choosing US East one dot S3 as a gateway endpoint. And we'll select the VPC that we have in the route table that we have to select over here is this one where this is the main route table. I've selected the main route table and rest of it is fine i don't want to do any custom policy or tagging i'll just create the endpoint let me click on that button vpc endpoint is there and then you have this route table if i open this route table let it load the route table here you can see the route association over here is this pl and then you can see vpc endpoint if i'm looking for if I open this PL, this is a prefix list. And then you can see Amazon has already given you a prefix list for US East 1 to S3 bucket. And if you look at the entries, you'll find all the IP addresses that the data will traverse through. So one of them will be chosen to connect with S3 from the private endpoint using the private IP address. If I go back to this, and if I go back to my, because the route entry is already there, 
let me clear it you can see I'm still in the private EC2 instance and if I say AWS S3 LS you can see now I can have a listing of S3 buckets but if I say um, ping google.com you can see that the ping is going on 142.250.31113 but that is not available as this particular EC2 instance cannot connect to internet so no other IP addresses that are available within the prefix list for connecting to the AWS S3 service will be entertained you won't receive any response here if I do an exit from this now I am on the public subnet and I'm in the EC2 that is hosted in this public subnet so if I, I'm doing a ping google.com here we are on 10.0.0.8.1 and I can show you that this EC2 instance is the private address is 10.0.0.8.1 in the public address is 54.88.207 so if I come back to this and do a ping, you will see that you're getting a response from this ping. Hope this was helpful. This is the end of the episode. Thank you for watching. If you liked the video, please like, share, subscribe, and press the notification bell icon for future updates. This is your host, Bhavesh Kumar, signing off. Thank you so much.